Hello everyone, welcome to another video. In this video, I will do a one year update review on the Fitness Gear 300 pound Olympic weight set from Dick's Sporting Goods. I did an in depth unboxing review a year ago when I first purchased it, and I definitely recommend checking out that video first. Among other things, I measured each plate and the barbell and compared it to the standard plates, weighed each plate for accuracy, and disassembled the barbell to reveal the construction. In this video, I will elaborate on observations and predictions I made in the first video, and address some popular questions that I received in the comments on the first video. I will also show how it has held up over the first year, and go over some new observations and experiences with one year of regular use. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe for more how-to and review videos. Now, let's get started. Starting with last year's video, there is one measurement that I did not do. It is the bore of the plates. It has stood out to me with use, because it is oversized and sloppy. The bore measures in at 2.093 inches. For comparison, here is a different brand of plate. The bore measures in at 2.018 inches, which is a better fit on the 2 inch bar. The sloppy fit is not an issue for bench press or squats, but it becomes noticeable when lifting off the floor during deadlifts because initially there is no resistance while lifting out the slack, and this results in extra noise when picking it up and putting it down. The next item from the first video is adding grease to the ends. There is no bearing or bushing in the end. I said I would add some grease, but didn't show how. There were questions about the bolt size and how I did it, so let's do it. First, remove the retaining bolt. It requires a 10 mm hex wrench to remove it. It is a socket head cap screw, M12 thread by 30 millimeters long. With the bolt removed, the sleeve slides off. These are the two contact surfaces where the sleeve rotates on the bar. Number one, and number two. Add grease to these surfaces. I just used some bearing grease that I had on hand. Teflon grease is probably ideal because it won't attract dirt. But, I'm not working out on the beach. This room is clean, and the bearing grease has worked just fine. I've still got some grease on my finger, so I may as well hit the contact points on the end as well. All greased up. Now, reassemble it. Slide the end back on. Install the bolt. And tighten it down. Next is the weight capacity. The barbell is advertised at 300 pounds. I have received several questions asking if it is safe at 300 pounds. This set includes 255 pounds of plates. Here is all of it loaded on the bar, so this is the whole 300 pound set. I typically lift between 200 and 300 pounds, and I have not experienced any issues. I work as a mechanical engineer designing complex machines for a living. The advertised load rating is not the braking strength. There should be a significant safety factor. And because it is a lifting application, it should be safe for at least four times that in my professional opinion. But that's general design practice. I did not design this bar. The only facts I can give you are that I have used it loaded with up to 255 pounds of plates for a year with no issues. Here is a level on the bar which shows that it is still straight and has not permanently deformed over time. All good. The next item from the unboxing video is the observation of the prominent grooves cut in the ends of the barbell, and the prediction that the chrome plating or the paint in the bore of the plates will excessively wear. The grooves have knocked down with use, and are no longer aggressive. The chrome plating is still intact, and I have not noticed any flaking. There is some wear to the paint in the bore of the plate, but I would expect this type of wear using any bar with ribs over time. I think the last issue pointed out in the unboxing video was the 45 pound plates being 2 inches undersized compared to standard plates, resulting in the bar being 1 inch lower than standard for deadlifts. One solution that was recommended in a comment was a set of 45 pound bumper plates, so they will be in contact with the ground. This solves two issues. First, it brings the bar up to the standard height, and second, eliminates slamming the cast iron fitness gear plates on the ground. I did look into this. But two bumper plates pretty much cost the same as what I paid for the whole 300 pound weight set. I chose not to go that route. And also, if you want to get technical, that's only a partial solution. Bumper plates are all the same diameter, regardless of weight. 
so every plate touches the floor and supports itself. The inner plate is not intended to support the weight of all the plates on the bar. In addition, on this note, if you intend to do a lot of groundwork, you should pursue bumper plates. Cast iron plates are not suitable for slamming on the ground. I personally purchased these 1.5 inch thick pads to elevate the bar and add cushion for the plates. I do not slam the daylights out of my plates and have been satisfied with this solution. The cost was $20, and a product link is down in the video description. So that finishes tying up loose ends from the first video. Now let's get into observations with one year of use. I did come across a defect that I didn't notice during the unboxing. There is some extra material here, maybe some slag from the casting. I've left it here to be able to cover it in this update video, but it could very well damage the floor or something. Let's grind this off. While I'm out here, here's a sneak peek at a weight plate storage rack that I'm working on. I'm filming it, so hopefully I'll have a build video posted in the next few weeks. We'll clean up the weight plate here, where it's already a mess. First, I'll grind it off. Then, sand it smooth. Much better. Glad that's finally addressed. The handles are a great feature. I have owned solid iron plates in the past, and I definitely prefer handles over no handles. The paint on these plates has held up great. It is tough and the top finish is smooth. The bar has held up great as well. The chrome plating is still present and intact. The bar has not deformed, and it functions just fine. So that covers it. After one year of regular use, this set has held up great, and I have no regrets purchasing it. If you are considering this weight set, here are a few highlights to keep in mind. Possible pros. The handles are great, and I personally prefer the handles over no handles. The measured weights of the plates are pretty accurate. The set has held up great over one year with no issues. Possible cons. The 45 pound plates are two inches undersized compared to standard plates. The bar is as economical as it gets with no bearings or bushings and the advertised weight capacity is only 300 pounds. If any of these don't sit right with you, I recommend getting something else. Saving a couple dollars on this set will haunt you as you train with it day after day. I personally have no issues or regrets with this purchase. The weights are accurate and I put them on the bar and I lift them. The only possible issue for me is the 300 pound weight capacity of the barbell. But when I pay $250 for this set, I consider the plates to be a steal at a dollar per pound and the barbell to be free. So possibly upgrading to a higher capacity barbell in the future was something I expected at the time of purchase. I realize that this set is currently $400. I have not researched other currently available options and do not know if there are other competitively priced weight sets. That's up to you. So, that wraps it up. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Subscribe for more how-to and review videos. Drop any comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.